I'm going to read how the meeting tonight runs, and then I'm just going to do a little explanation in case anyone here has questions and you don't understand what I'm going to read. I'll say it in easier terms. So there'll be no questions. We have a long meeting tonight. The City of Peabody Zoning Board of Appeals meets tonight in accordance with Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 40A and other applicable laws. Tonight's hearing will be conducted hi Steve, in the following manner. The Secretary will read the legal notice or state that such notice has been waived. All applications will be heard in the order they were received in the City Clerk's Office or as otherwise designated by the Chair. The petitioner or petitioner's representative will present the subject application to the Board. The Chair may limit the length of all remarks. All parties and interest will be given an opportunity to speak either in favor or in opposition to a pending application, and the Board may receive similar written communications to be placed on the public record. The petitioner will be given the opportunity to refute any such remarks. The decision will then be typed and filed with the City Clerk. Once the decision is filed with the City Clerk, you have a 20-day appeal period. In compliance with the open meeting law, this hearing is also being recorded stenographically by our clerk. When you're up at the podium, please speak directly into the microphone. Please speak clearly and only speak at the podium to ensure you are on the record. What that all means is this. We will take everybody in order. I would imagine you know what order you're in. We're going to call your name anyway. Our secretary will read the petition. The, all the petition is is your name, your address, and what you're here for. A farmer's porch, a garage, whatever. Then you come up to the podium, you state your name and address for the record, and either you, the person who lives at that address, you're a lawyer or a contractor or whomever wants to represent you, comes up, name and address for the record, and then you tell us why you're here in detail, but keeping to the subject matter. Um, we are not concerned with any extraneous information about neighbors, families, where you work, how much you, your neighbor is not likable. We're not concerned with that. If you start with going off track to that extent, I'll do this and I'll, I'll stop you because it's not our business and, and we really don't want to hear that. And after you're done explaining, the board will ask you some questions and then it gets lively. We then ask anybody in the audience, your, usually your neighbors, does anyone, is, anybody want to speak in favor? Come up to the podium, name and address for the record, tell us why you're in favor of your neighbor doing whatever. We don't get too many of those. This is a good thing. And then we say, is there anybody in the audience to speak in opposition? Now, here's where it gets a little, little tricky. I don't care if there's 50 people here. You can all come up to the podium and speak in opposition. You state your name and address for the record, and the first 10 people are going to say whatever they're going to say. The other 15, please don't repeat yourself. You still get credit for coming up to the podium, stating your name and address, and you can just say, I agree with, and I'm in opposition for the same reasons that the people before me stated. Okay, it just saves time and redundancy. Everybody can have a chance to speak. And once again, I don't want to hear about the loud noise, the music that gets played till 3 o'clock. You're here for dimensional relief and we want to stick to why you are in opposition. At that point, the petitioner, the person that wants to put on the addition or whatever, come back to the microphone or your lawyer and refute anything that was said. Um, and then we might ask a few more questions and we either uh, deny it or we approve it. If we approve it, or whatever decision we make, you have a 20-day appeal period. At that point, Carla has a written paper 
telling you what that all means. And I believe it does include weekends. Okay. Um, that being said, a few things that we don't want are people in the seats after you're done talking, or if you forgot something, or if something angers you, please don't speak out from your seat. If it's really that important, you can come back up and speak. But I say this every, every month, and I always have somebody shouting something out from their seat. Please don't do that. The only other thing I want to say tonight is this. Every single petition is taken on an individual basis. For anybody here to think, and anybody listening, to think that across the board, this zoning board um, denies everything or we approve everything is foolishness. Every case is taken on an individual basis. And we look at everything there is to look at, and we make site visits before or sometimes even after. The zoning laws are put into effect to abide by. You are here because you need some dimensional relief. So, as long as, you know, it, it all sorts of fit, it fits in, we'll, we'll approve it. If we deny it, please don't take it personally. It just didn't work out. And the last thing I, I don't want to happen anymore is for if you are denied, please don't call the zoning board clerk and I don't know really how to put this diplomatically, yell at her or, or berate her. She's not the one that made the decision. We've made the decision. The other thing is we have a new application and it's very clear and it's very concise. And if you need help filling it out, Carla can help you. But Carla, under no circumstances, is going to fill out your application for you. If you can read it, you can fill it out. Obviously, you will have, some people will have questions. That's normal. Call Carla, come and see Carla. She'll help you, she'll guide you, but she will not fill out your application. So please don't assume that that's happening. That being said, Kevin McHugh, I'm sure, will be here at any minute. We are going to start with number one, which is a continued application of Elizabeth Thomas, 55 Aberdeen Ave. Thank you, Madam Chairperson and members of the board. My name is John Kelty. I'm an attorney. I practice law at 40 Lowell Street, Peabody, Massachusetts. I was not uh, counsel uh, at the last meeting that uh, my clients appeared at. Uh, I am representing Betty Thomas and uh, Leanne Manning. Uh, they are, well, Betty is the owner of the property. Uh, Leanne is the daughter. And I have some documents that I'd like to share uh, with the um, with the board.
So I've uh, given you uh, four instruments, two of which are letters from uh, abutters who have uh, given us letters of support uh, for the project proposal that is uh, before you this evening, <coughs> which is in addition to the property at 55 Aberdeen Ave. The first of the two plans that I gave you uh, the first one depicts uh, an existing wetland. Uh, we have engaged the services of uh, William Manuel and we have actually filed uh, with the Conservation Commission in order to uh, build the addition that's contemplated by, uh, this, uh, by this application, which is before you this evening. Uh, the wetland shows to be off of uh, our land but um, our proposed construction of the uh, foundation and the addition will be within the jurisdiction of the wetland, so as such we have filed uh, a notice of intent and that'll be heard on October 10th. Additionally, the second plan that I gave you, I've highlighted in yellow an area which is uh, an existing porch which is uh, located on the left-hand side of the property and uh, then uh, the, there's a deck that's at the rear of the premises and that deck and that porch uh, will be uh, eliminated, torn down in order to accommodate the addition that's being proposed. Uh, the variance uh, that ha has been requested is uh, maximum lot coverage of 32.8% uh, uh, and um, where 25% uh, lot coverage is required. We are asking for a front yard of 17.8 feet rather than 25 and a side yard of uh, 20 feet, of uh, 4.6 feet rather than 20 feet. Uh, those were all uh, set forth on the plan that was originally uh, filed with the board and also they are set forth on the uh, both the Conservation Commission uh, and the, uh, the plan that I gave you this evening that shows the, uh, the uh, addition, I'm sorry, that shows uh, where the wetlands are located and the plan that shows where the porch is. And since the last meeting, uh, we've been able to engage in um, discussions with our neighbors to the rear and we are uh, extremely confident that uh, we are uh, entering into an agreement to purchase uh, the land that is located to the rear. It shows on all of the plans as the, the Caproni Nominee Trust. It's approximately a little over 5,000 square feet. It, is, uh, it does have uh, wetlands located on it and we are um, engaged in, uh, the, uh, I've already ordered a municipal lien certificate, I've ordered a title on the land, and we're uh, expecting, to, hopefully, to buy that parcel of land from the Capronis uh, before the end of October, uh, following uh, our appearance at the Conservation Commission. Uh, at the last meeting, uh, the contractor architect appeared and made a presentation. You had a question about whether or not uh, an area of the land that is going to be utilized as a FALA, family um, accessory living area, uh, whether or not that was uh, in accordance with the FALA requirements. Uh, there was uh, a review conducted by the building commissioner, Albert Tellerico, and I believe he supplied a letter for your file which uh, uh, suggested that, more than suggested, it said that the uh, Fowler was in compliance with the Fowler regulations, so what you have before you is a straight variance requesting, uh, making three requests, and we're happy uh, this evening to answer any questions you may have. We hope that we have supplemented uh, our earlier filing with uh, a sufficient information to allow the board to act this evening, and we would be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Um, Jack, is the land on, is that an easement to the right side of the property that goes back into the woods? On the right hand side there's a paper street uh, which has never been built out. Uh, it doesn't show as being owned by uh, either of these parties on the, on the uh, assessor's map it shows as a paper street city of Peabody. Okay. 
I, I, I have to admit I was a little concerned the last time they were here, but I did have an opportunity to drive by and, uh, you know, at first glance it doesn't look like there's an awful lot of room to the left-hand side, but if you go back you can understand that there is quite a bit of room, so um, I would have no problem. Oh. Would you have any objections to making it conditional to the purchase of the land and a conservation commission determination? I have no objection to conservation approval, uh, but if the sellers of the land were to back out, I don't think that's necessarily an appropriate okay. uh, condition for the variance, but we're certainly amenable to uh, conservation approval. Okay, thank you. Anybody in the audience to speak in favor? Anybody in the uh, favor? In favor? Yep, come right up. Name and address for the record, please. My name is Joe Doherty. I live two doors down from the Thomases. I am in favor of their petition. My name is Ismaila. I live at 54 Aberdeen, and I'm. Oh, holding. Any else in favor? Anybody in opposition? Any other questions? Hearing none, the matter is before the board. <laughs> uh, make a motion to approve with the condition uh, that this uh, be approved through the uh, Conservation Commission. Call vote, please. Yes. 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 Thank you very much, members. Number two is also a continued uh, application of 9 and 11 Davis Terrace. Attorney Ankeles. Thank you. Uh, I believe we ended up last time uh, with a request for a uh, stormwater management report. Since that point in time, uh, we have had uh, Eastern Land Survey uh, prepare a stormwater management report in depth. There is a copy of that report that was submitted, I believe, uh, to your uh, secretary together with a detailed plan. Uh, Christopher Mello from Eastern Land Survey is here tonight uh, to review both the uh, report and the plan if uh, I may defer to him at this time. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Chris Mello from Eastern Land Survey, 104 Lowell Street, Peabody. And uh, this matter was before you with a plan that we developed uh, to divide the lot 
and at your last meeting you had requested uh, some information regarding uh, utilities and drainage and uh, my client engaged me to prepare uh, some information. We submitted to you in July a uh, stormwater management uh, report that includes uh, some drainage computations, a design uh, for a drainage mitigation plan and an operations and maintenance uh, program. Essentially uh, what we're doing, and I'll come up and point some of that out, is that there is a pool and a large concrete apron on the property uh, right now straddling the uh, two lots. We plan to remove the pool, remove the concrete apron, which are both impervious, and replace that with a house and a small retaining wall. Currently uh, a lot of the land from the pool and the apron drain towards the rear of the property into a, a lower swale area and drain towards uh, North End Street through the backyards and eventually gets out. What we're going to do by introducing a small retaining wall is to take most of that lot and drain it towards Davis Terrace, uh, mitigating some of the runoff that goes to the rear of the lot and uh, eliminating some of it. What we propose to do is build a, a drainage system uh, consisting of a half plastic tubing and, uh, sto and stone trenches, which is detailed on the plan, that will take not only the runoff uh, gravity from that wall, but the roof runoff through uh, four roof leaders into a closed system that will then go into this uh, system in the front of the lot. That lot will have the op opportunity to infiltrate, but we've not taken any credit for that. We've taken the entire area of the roof and provided enough storage for it in the proper event storm. That then has an outlet that will go across the street uh, on Davis Terrace into the existing drainage system. So that being said, we talk about... here and out toward uh, through the lots uh, from Davis Terrace to Driscoll Street and that's where the sewer goes. The drain is a little more cryptic. We've got it all in Davis Terrace. We know how it gets from Davis Terrace to Driscoll Street and we believe that it has been intercepted on the rear on the potato land because there are a couple of manholes and goes out to that catch basin. So there's no utilities running through this lot and we're not interfering with any of them. What we're trying to do is, we've got this nifty pen from Mr. Scorus, by the way, is build that dwelling. The area in yellow is the pool and the apron. That'll come out and become, most of it'll become uh, grass and will infiltrate on its own without being impervious. And the drainage system is out here in front. The roof leaders will come down the side and connect, down this side and connect. And then the overflow in the event the storm is met will come across the street into the catch basin there. Uh, we have a re reduction in area, a reduction in runoff, and we believe that uh, there is no uh, instance where this in impacts or changes the impact for anything but the better. I'd be happy to answer any questions on the design, uh, the computations, or the operation and maintenance plan that we provided. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
Hi, my name is Maria Vieira from 31 Park the Street. And I live in 31 Park the Street, so I'm right behind them. And my concern was the drainage. Uh, and it looks like a plan. I would like to see the actual plan, if uh, possible, I can review it too. But is engineering involved with this, or is this? Uh, is Chris, Chris you, can, you can fill in the uh, answers here, please. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. yes. Yeah. Uh, this was designed uh, by my civil engineer. Okay. It involves a roof, uh, roof system that will take the driveway, the roof itself, into roof leaders, and it'll take what's going now on that lot from the pool apron that drains towards you. Right. It'll take better than half of that by building a small wall and bringing that all towards Davis Terrace okay. so that the runoff towards Proctor Street will be reduced significantly that then goes across uh, the uh, property. Right, okay. The property to the left. So okay. this is a is a huge improvement to just building a house. Right. This is a system that takes care of the roof, takes care of the driveway, and transports it to the drainage system in Davis Terrace, where it eventually goes anyway. Okay. So we get it there a little quicker and a little less uh, going towards you and the rest of Proctor Terrace. Okay. I'm sorry, Proctor Street. Proctor Street, yeah, yes. I'm okay. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Anybody else with questions or in opposition? Okay. Hi, my name is Maria Lavero, and I live at 19 Dunlap Street in Salem. I'm here for my mother, who's 84, and lives directly behind Mr. Silva's property. We don't have a problem with putting two houses there. We have a problem with the drainage. The, it was flooded and I have pictures of the flood and I think we put it on social media and people saw it. And that's what I'm concerned about. I would like to have the engineer, the engineer for, for the town to come out and assess the water, where it's going. They're saying that they can run the water from the back of the Silvers property into Davis Terrace. I don't believe that. It's going to go directly back to my mother's house into the properties on Proctor Street. And I can see where it is. We see it every time there's a flat flush. And unless an engineer can tell me that that water is going to go the opposite direction instead of where it slopes, I would like to know this how you're going to do that. This engineer would be happy to show you. Okay. Okay, go ahead, Chris. Do you... But has the engineer from the town been involved to see it? No, and they, no. Don't, they normally wouldn't. They wouldn't, they, but if we position to them to go out there and look. Why don't we talk about this first okay. and see how you feel. May All I, right. ma Madam Chairman? But I'd, I'd yeah. Right now, <clears throat> there's their pool apron. Right. And all that water goes back here. And it goes down in the backyard and eventually goes out through Fatados and out here somehow. No, it goes into my mother's property. Not, my not mother's back here. Proctor Street. There's Proctor Street, right. right. What we're going to do is we're going to build a wall. We're going to build this land up here. To, so to, that, to the level of the pool? Higher. Higher than the pool. Higher than the pool. So all that water, when it rains, goes this way. It doesn't go back here. But if you build that well higher than the pool, the water's going to go back to Proctor no, no, Street. No, no, The water's going to go to Davis Terrace. Because have, we're gonna, have, any of the, have any of them gone out there to look at that, I, the I've way it slopes? There. Absolutely. I've gone out there and done a topographic survey. You can see the elevations here, 65, 66, Do you want to see the pictures 67. from the flood a couple I, of weeks I, I, ago? I believe you would floods. Okay. And what we've designed is a system that's going to mitigate that and take the bulk of the runoff that goes back here and stays there, and we're going to bring it right out into the Davis Terrace system. There's very few times I say this is an absolute improvement. This is one of them. Well, yeah, I would, okay, you, I believe you, good, but I also you. would like the engineer from the town to go out there and look at it and tell me the same thing. The, some I, people that I voted for to go out there and look for okay. it. Because I don't have a problem with the house going there. I have no issues with putting a house there, two houses. If it was me, I would be putting two houses there if I inherited land. 
and I would want the top dollar. And I don't have a problem with that. What I have a problem with is where the water's gonna go. Okay, so okay. what I see, see happening here is Chris and his engineers have done a wonderful job with the plan right. and with this entire study right. Uh, right here, the whole report, and it is, it is my opinion at this point in time to completely take the work that has been done by Chris and his engineers that, I mean, it, I can only speak for myself, but you feel free to chime in, but it lo does look like a major improvement. Um, right, but there's still no thing, the issue on the water from our engineer, from the engineers from the town. Through the chair, just. Uh, Are they you, here? You, you do not have. Oh, okay. All right. Sorry, I didn't right. yeah. we, we requested this as a result of the concerns of the neighborhood. We have a stamped plan here from an engineer. From the town? No. It's a licensed okay. engineer. engineer. Okay. Saying that this is going to improve it. And, and I guess to say you can believe him or you can't, I happen to believe him. Okay. Right? Because this is why we did this. We well, did this because of the concern of the flooding to Proctor Street. Right, and that, I mean, it concerned because it's directly, I mean, right. Proctor Street is not that far from it. You so, can see where the water goes. If you drive there or you go oh, there anytime. I, I grew up in that area. I, I okay. went to Carroll School. Don't worry. Okay. Good. I'm good. So I understand the water problem of the past. That's why when they were here before us before, being aware of that water problem, we wanted a plan to say that you're not going to make this situation worse. As a matter of fact, they've... They presented us with a, a sealed document with an engineer seal on it saying that it's going to be better. I mean, this, the city engineer is no different than this guy who's putting his stamp on this plan that he did the work. Right. You know? So, I, I, in my opinion, you're going to be very happy. With the well, I don't think we're going to be very happy if you put a, a retaining wall and, and the water's going, it, it, it's going to run back into Proctor Street. I can't, I can't believe it's going to run all the way into Davis Terrace. Well, they, they, they have now, they're removing the pool and the apron. They have the ability to change the way that water runs. They, okay. By the use of the attaining wall and sloping it, which is in this report, in the direction of... Because a lot of those houses are slabs, are I, not I, I understand. basements. I understand. I understand. And what they want to build there is a basement. So why, is some, why were the houses on that street? Most of them are slabs, and they're not building a slab. Uh, uh, well, uh, I, I think that's making a better case yeah. for what they're trying to do. Right. Is that if they're willing to uh, believe in this plan, right. and build a house with a basement that's going to get water before your slab is, right. I think they're pretty confident in this plan. I, 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 I would still like to see the engineering plans. And uh, okay. I'm not okay. comfortable with that. Anything else? No, but that's it. I'm just concerned about that. I'm not concerned about that. Anybody else in opposition? Good evening. My name is Ray Bencourt. I'm also representing my mother, I'm Maria Bencourt, at 29 Proctor. Her backyard is the lowest point on Davis Terrace. Um, Proctor and Oakland Street. Uh, there is a drainage in front of the house at Proctor. If you go by there, August 12th, everybody was pumping after noontime, and the street was blocked in, at 8 a.m. Um, we do not have a full basement. We currently pump water. It's anywhere from 12 inches of water to a, eight, a foot and a half, and it combined from Pro, um, Proctor all the way to the back of the yard. Um, we're pumping constantly anywhere from um, a third to a, a horsepower sump pump, which has an inch and a quarter hose. I don't know how many gallons that is a minute pumping out. After this is changed, a foundation is put in, uh, it's still going to go to the lowest point. I don't know what size, how many gallons you have to move to actually move the water away from, a, a, not a basement, but a, a, going, going into the house. 
And August, June, June 18th was the last meeting, and we had some rain that day. It was beginning of summer. Uh, it, it came down gradually, so it was not a problem. August 12th, there's plenty of pictures out there from the neighborhood that you can welcome if you. Okay. Uh, the other option was uh, somebody spoke for the uh, plan June 8th, 18th, it was here at 15 Proctor Street. That is not a bill of a lot, and there's nothing they can do with that lot because it has a sewer drain in it. All the other houses were built. My mother's been there over 50 years. The other houses were there from anywhere from 30 to 30, 20 to 30 years, and they're not, they're, none of them have a found, uh, basement on it. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else in opposition? Questions or comments by us? Motion to close the public hearing. Motion to approve. I think we ought to do the motion to approve on the condition that they utilize the um, stormwater management report um, and the engineering that's been presented to us here tonight if we were to approve this variance. So, so it'll be a motion to approve with the um, condition that the owner of the property comply with the uh, stormwater management report 9-11 Davis Terrace, PBD, Massachusetts, that was prepared in July of 2018 for Joseph Silva uh, by Clayton A. Morin at Eastern Land Survey Associates. Yes. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it. Number three is Brian and Janet Sutcliffe, 12 Scott Drive. Continued. Another continued. Uh, good evening, board members. My name is Brian Sutcliffe and we're seeking a variance for 12 Scott Drive in Peabody. Hi, I'm Janet Sutcliffe. Um, we're um, attempting to get a 15 by 39 addition. My son and his family will be moving in with us and we have a hardship. It's the shape of the lot that narrows to the rear of our property and we're looking for um, a variance on that. Just tell us what's going into the addition. I can't. So we're going to be putting a living area in, and a couple bedrooms, and then in, oh, in storage because of the number of the people we need the storage, and that's a slab. Uh, we may have asked this last time, but it's been a few months. Sure. Um, so. In this addition, are you planning to put any kind of kitchen in there? No, no, no. We're just okay. putting, making the house larger and more of a family home. Compared to the last time you were before the board, uh, is there any difference in this plan from last time? I just want to make sure I'm not missing some kind of revision. No. Okay. Well, no, what it was is, no, last time we did put the four feet on. I'm a little confused. Yeah, it's very. To the board, to the. It's the high chip. I didn't do that correctly. Yeah, that's fine. I think it was a little bit more than that. 
do you, do you, through the chair, um, where are the sheds that are going to be removed? Do you own lot 902? One is, one's like 40 years old, pardon me? Do you own lot 902? I'm sorry, I didn't. Do you own the adjacent lot? No, there's homes around us. Adjacent lot? Is that? No. Yeah. No, there's a... Is, no. where, where's the shed? Is it on your property or is yes, it on... Oh, yeah, it's on my property, yes. Where is it? But it doesn't show um, on the plan. Just so the board can hear, the existing shed is located within where the addition would be, just the next door to the house there. On the right-hand side, that's where the shed is. Okay. That's why it's got to go. I don't, if you, I have no problem with this, but, you know. So it doesn't really, it's immaterial. Questions? Anybody in the audience to speak in favor? Anybody in the audience to speak in opposition? Hearing none, the matter is before the board. Motion to close the public hearing. Second. <laughs> Motion to approve. Second. <laughs> Roll call vote, please. Yes. 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 Thank you, boy. Number four, Donald and Paula Coolis. Notice is hereby given that the Board of Appeals of the City of Peabody will hold a public hearing on Monday, September 17th at 7 p.m. at the Wigan Auditorium City Hall, 24 Lowell Street, Peabody, on the application of Donald and Paula Coolis for Ronnie Terrace, Peabody, for a variance from the provision of the Zoning Ordinance 2017 as amended Section 72, as it applies to the premises known as 4 Ronnie Terrace, Peabody, Map 101, Lot 201. Petitioners proposing an addition in open deck. Petitioner seeks relief to the left side yard where 17 plus or minus feet are proposed and 20 feet are required. To the front yard where 21.5 plus or minus feet are proposed and 25 feet are required. Lot coverage where 26.6% is proposed and 25% is allowed. Properties located in R1 zoning district. Application and plot plan are available for review at the City Clerk and Board of Appeals Office City Hall and will be available at the time of public hearing. Hi, my name's Donald Coolis uh, for Ronnie Terrace PB. And I'm here today, I, uh, I need some relief a little bit from you guys because uh, as you saw in the plot plan that I have there, it came up a little bit short, like two feet on one side and 17 plus feet that you propose that we need 20, uh, 21 and a half feet, we, it's 25. And the lot coverage is 26.6 and I got 25. So, like, you know, so anyways, I fall short here and uh, that's why I'm here tonight. Thanks for listening to me. So this is just a little, like just a little room and a, a little room and a what? And a deck? And a and deck an off deck. of the, the side of it, yes. I, I went by this house and um, it doesn't seem, I mean, it seems like the little bit that they want to add on seems fine to me. Um, Through, through the chair, he, he, he's in the, I'm in the neighborhood, so yeah. it's not going to be any, yeah. Anybody in the audience to speak in favor? In opposition? 
motion to close the public hearing. Second. Motion to approve. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Aye. You're all set. Thank you. Five. Notice is hereby given that the Board of Appeals of the City of Peabody will hold a public hearing on Monday, September 17th at 7 p.m. at the Wigan Auditorium, City Hall, 24 Lowell Street, Peabody, on the application of Benjamin Joyce, 40 Surrey Lane, Peabody, for a variance from the provision of the Zoning Ordinance 2017 as amended Section 72, as it applies to the premises known as 40 Surrey Lane, Peabody, Map 3, Lot 25. Petitioner is proposing an addition and seeks relief to the rear yard where 27.49 plus or minus feet are proposed and 35 feet are required. Properties located in the R1 zoning district. The application and plot plan are available for review at the City Clerk and Board of Appeals Office City Hall and will be available at the time of public hearing. Ben Joyce, 40 Surrey Lane, looking for a leaf uh, at the rear. Uh, lot line for a modest kitchen with storage underneath. Um, I'm not encroaching any more than already is in the current building now. I'm just could you, chair, oh, go ahead. I'm just curious, how did you become non-conforming in the first place in Surrey Lane? I, I bought it. We just bought it in June, so evidently what I bought was non-conforming. Oh, okay. So the person before me or a couple before me, I don't know the history of it. Okay, all right. So Thank you just you. want to make everything they, legal? They didn't have um, record of any um, permits or anything at the um, building department. There's a kitchen being built, but it's within the footprint. It's not. It's not getting any closer to the setback. Right. Exactly. exactly. Right. Yeah. Just to make everything legal. Try to do things right. Mr. Osborne, didn't you just bring that up the an hour ago? <laughs> Questions by the board. Anybody in favor? Anybody in opposition? This one is. Thank you for coming and Too doing easy. things run. right. Too easy. Motion to close. Second. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Notice is hereby given that the Board of Appeals of the City of Peabody will hold a public hearing on Monday, September 17th, 7 p.m. at the Wigan Auditorium City Hall, 24 Lowell Street, Peabody, on the application of Nicole Pretorius, care of T. Garrick Steel, 252 Andover Street, Peabody, for a variance from the provision of the Zoning Ordinance 2017 as amended Section 117F as it applies to the premises known as 252 Andover Street, Peabody, Map 39, Lot 25C. Petitioner seeks relief to secondary wall sign where two square feet are allowed with no name or symbol, and 14.43 square feet are proposed with the Audi Link logo. The property is located in a BR zoning district. The application and plot plan are available for review at the City Clerk and Board of Appeals Office, City Hall, and will be available at the time of public hearing. Just before we go on the record with this, I just want to make sure it's fully disclosed that many years ago I had some representation with respect to this property, but I believe I can remain completely impartial on this. It's been so long. Great. Thank uh, you. Me as well. <laughs> and I can also remain <laughs> unbiased. It may even still be ongoing, but I can still remain unbiased. Not me. I'm good. <laughs> there we go. Uh, Richard Pretorius, uh, Pretorius Electric and Sign, West Bridgewater, Mass., uh, representing Audi of Peabody. Uh, they're seeking to add a service department directional sign on the wall because um, that property is very narrow. So normally a service department entrance is parallel with the front of the building. This is on the side. They're having a lot of issues with people driving right by, not seeing the service, si service entrance sign, circling around the back parking lot um, and getting irate. Um, wondering whether why they didn't see a sign. Um, I believe the, the, they're contractually obligated to use Audi approved signage, and this is what 
um, Audi uh, approves is this um, it has it has the rings and the service with the arrow pointing to the left. They're, um, Backlit? Yes. Backlit? Yes. No. Nothing flashing? No flashing. Anybody in the audience to speak in favor? In opposition? Motion to close the public hearing. Motion to approve. All in favor? Any opposed? All set. Thank you. Thank you. Raymond Melvin. <clears throat> Is it? No, I'm sorry. Number seven. Jonathan Cahill. And go ahead. Application about Jonathan Cahill and Abigail Wirtz, 7 Cedar Grove Ave, Peabody. Petitioner seeking a variance to allow proposed deck to the premises located at 7 Cedar Grove Ave, Peabody. Relief is needed to the left side yard where 10.8 feet is proposed and 15 feet is required. Property is located in R1A zoning district. It happens when you read the agenda item and not the notice. <laughs> notice is hereby given that the Board of Appeals of the City of Peabody will hold a public hearing Monday, September 17, 7 p.m., Wigan Auditorium, City Hall, 24 Lowell Street, Peabody, on the application of Jonathan and Abigail Cahill. That's different. 7 Cedar Grove Ave, Peabody, Massachusetts, for a variance from the provision of the Zoning Ordinance 2017 as amended Section 72, as it applies to the premises known as 7 Cedar Grove Ave, Peabody, Map 109, Law 206. Petitioner is proposing an open deck and seeks relief to the left side yard where 10.8 plus or minus feet are proposed and 15 feet are required. This property is located in R1A Zoning District. The application and plot plan are available for review at the City Clerk and Board of Appeals Office City Hall and will be available at the time of public hearing. Uh, my name is Jonathan Cahill, my wife Abigail. Um, I want to thank Carla and the rest of the board for letting us uh, hear our proposal this evening. Um, we are looking for I think it's 4.6 feet of relief on the left side of the house. We do have five letters of support from our neighbors, all of our direct uh, abutters. Uh, one is the owner of Nine Cedar Grove, and we sent him an email, and I have a copy of it here if you'd like to see that as well. He's the owner. Um, we do not have the renter there. Uh, the one uh, substantial hardship we have is the property is already outside of any zoning, so if we were to do anything, we would need an uh, immediate um, a variance of any kind. And we are no, not going any farther or closer to the uh, abutters property line. The chair? Yep. It looks like, um, looking at the plan, the deck looks like it has a couple step downs. Are those the stairs that are going to lead off of it, or will there be a separate stairway? Excuse me? The, uh, the, the plan, and maybe I'm just looking at it wrong. It looks oh, like yes. There are yeah, several the, yeah, there are two. Yeah, there's two stairways on two sides of the deck. One is going to be a, a wall of sorts. There's not going to be any stairs leading off the left side of the property. And, of course, the fourth side is the house. So it is just going to be an open, uh, open deck. Okay, so there's no additional stairwell that will be to the uh, lot 205 Correct. side of things. Correct. Okay. Correct. Any stairway is going towards the rear of the property or the right side, which is within any type of issue. Questions? Concerns? Move to close the public hearing. Well, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't uh, ask for anything yet. Anybody in opposition? <laughs> Anybody in favor? Okay. Move to close the public hearing. Second. Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? You're all set. Thank you very much. Raymond Melville. Melvin. All right, this time I'm going to read the notice. Okay, thanks. Notice is hereby given that the Board of Appeals of the City of Peabody will hold a public hearing on Monday, September 17th, 7 p.m., Wigan Auditorium, City Hall, 24 Lowell Street, Peabody, on the application of Raymond. Melvin, 21 Dale Street, Peabody, for variance from the provision of the Zoning Ordinance 2017 as amended. Section 72, 
as it applies to the premises known as 21 Dale Street, PVD Map 17, Lot 16. This petitioner is proposing an addition and seeking relief to the left side yard where 11 plus or minus feet are proposed and 20 feet are required. The property is located in an R1 zoning district. The application and plot plan are available for review at the City Clerk and Board of Appeals Office City Hall and will be available at the time of public hearing. Good evening. Uh, my name is Ray Melvin. I'm here with my son, uh, Raymond, who's the owner of the property at 21 Dale Street. Um, I happen to be the co-builder along with him. Uh, we're seeking a side yard variance of nine feet um, for an addition onto an existing Campanelli slab type home. The structure is going to consist of being a slab addition, uh, and the addition will be approximately 33 by 12 with a wraparound in the front. Uh, that uh, addition will, that structure will be uh, mainly master bedroom and walk in closet. Question. Uh, the shed is staying or leaving? It's going. It's, yeah, it's, a, it's an old existing shed. It, it will be torn down. It, it hasn't been as of yet, but it will be. Is that a condition? So Absolutely. You're going to have to do that. The termites got to it long before you guys did. It's got to go. <laughs> miss if I didn't ask but it seems like there's a lot more land if you're facing the house on the right side what's the reason we're yeah, not putting well it over the there? bedrooms are on that side this this home has really small bedrooms and he looked at expansion and our first route was building up I, I know the building department kind of frowns upon second stories and Campanelli's and I do too <laughs> um, but I, we, so we thought the best way to do this was to go out um, we, um, he did speak with his neighbors in the vicinity and showed them kind of what we're doing. Uh, I don't have a current elevation, but it is going to stay one story. It's going to have a double gable. It's going to match the garage. It's going to stay consistent with the neighborhood. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. And the reason for the jog is there's going to be a double gable just to make it look like it's maybe a little newer. Uh where lot 190 is, is there an elevation change to topography? topography it, 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 does, it does go down. It slopes down, and it's heavily treed in between, it is. Okay. In, in between the two properties. That's concerns. Anybody in the audience in favor? We're dwindling. Anybody in opposition? Motion to close the public hearing. Motion to approve with the condition that the uh, existing shed be torn down. Roll call vote, please. Yes. 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 Thank you. And number nine, Joseph Carpenito. Notice hereby given that the Board of Appeals City of PBD hold a public hearing on Monday, September 17, 7 p.m. Wigan Auditorium City Hall, 24 Low Street PBD on the application of Joseph Carpenito, 13 Madison Ave PBD for a variance from the provision of the Zoning Ordinance 2017 as amended Section 715C as it applies to the premises known as 13 Madison Ave PBD, Map 15, Lot 59. The petitioner is seeking a variance to allow proposed detached garage and needs relief to the height where 28.6 plus or minus feet is proposed, 20 feet is allowed, and lot coverage where 500 square feet are allowed and 900 square feet are proposed. Property is located in a R1 zoning district. The application and plot plan are available for review at the City Clerk and Board of Appeals Office City Hall and will be available at the time of public hearing. Um, yes, uh, Joe Caponito, uh, 13 Madison Ave, Peabody, Mass. Um, just looking to rebuild the garage on the existing um, on the existing foundation that was there. Um, I've brought down the height of the original garage that was there from almost 34 feet to 28 and a half feet and um, I know I the size of the garage being 30 30 is is over the uh, the limit for that I have um, letters of support from my immediate abutters and um, 
Tenemos some problems with this right off the bat. Uh, first of all, I'm familiar with this property, um, and it seems as though, beyond a shadow of my doubt, that you are conducting a business in that garage. And um, Section 4, Table 4.2 of the Ordinances, Schedule of Use Regulation, shows by law a residential zoning district may not be used for business. Section 9.2 of the Zoning Ordinance also allows for only one commercial vehicle, not in public way, and not to exceed 12,000 pounds, to be used solely by the owner of the property, not by a business. Those are my first two concerns. Okay. Um, Yes, the size of the garage is um, large. Uh, did you make any changes to this first petition at all? No. About the height. What do you mean? Uh, I... D did you change any time when you did this to what you're just saying now? No. Okay. Um, we do have quite in-depth opposition here um, from three of your neighbors. Okay. Um, you know, the, the uh, apparent storage of pool chemicals uh, does not sit right with me at all. It's extremely dangerous. Um, okay, I, I know that the um, I, I know the, the the original report from the from the fire department said that it appears that I stored large amounts of chemicals, but I could tell you that I had one tub of shock, I had one tub of of um, tabs for my own pool. I I usually buy my chemicals, and I don't use a lot of chemicals except during openings and closings. Um, right, so you don't lose a, use a lot of chemicals except opening and closing, which is an entire summer. And, and I don't want to argue with you here, okay. but I, I, would like it, I would like to be very, very truthful. I drive by this at least once a day. Yep. Your garage was always open. There's an enormous amount of, I'm just going to say chemicals. I, you know, I, it's not my property to go into, but there's a lot of stuff within that garage. Now, the fact of the matter is you can't conduct that. You can't store that there. So I know you want to rebuild, but the garage has to be for a garage. The top of the garage can't be for storage. I'm not, right now, I'm not comfortable. I, I, need, I would like some guidance from the board on what exactly what to do. I want you to all please take a very good look at what has been presented as far as the opposition and the aerial views. It also seems like you've been cited a few times for uh, running a business out of this garage. Um, it, it, it can't happen. You know, if you continue to run a business out of your garage, I'm going to tell you right now, we're going to have to take you to court. Right. So either you decide that, okay, maybe let me think about this for a while, let me continue it, maybe I'm going to ru run my business someplace else and make the garage a real garage, because I'm not comfortable with this at all. Okay. The safety of yourself, your family, and the neighbors, you know, and you've been cited for this before? I, I, I'm not comfortable. I, I was, I was, as far as I know, I was cited for parking my, my truck in, in the driveway, which I, which I still, and I will admit, I still continue to do. I don't have any place else to park it. I'm currently looking for a place to park it. But as far as, like I... You been, how long have you been in business? Uh, 33 years. And you're just finding a place to park it now? I... I mean, if, if you would 2015, like... In 2015, you were cited that you are running a pool business from your house. This is 2018. From the building inspector. 2015. We're not here to tell you you can't build, but I really have to tell you, we're here to tell you you have to do the right thing. I, I understand that. I mean, if but you I understood it since 2015.
could, could I address the, the chemicals again? Because I, I can honestly say I have never, ever stored chemicals. I have a lot of empty buckets that I do use for work. I use it when I'm doing tile jobs. I use it for thin set. I save my empty buckets. I do buy a lot. I usually buy them in two and threes. They stay in my truck or in, or in my helper's truck and they're, out, and they're used up w within two days and then I replenish. I, I don't buy 50 drums of chlorine and store them at my house. So I well, never where have. Do How do you do it? I, I'm, I'm at my supplier, it's right down in North Andover. I'm there three or four days a week. I pick up a couple few tubs, they stay in the truck, I do my closings, I use a tub or two each day, and then I go and then I'm back down there. The the empty buckets that they that they thought were filled with chlorine were filled with sand for doing the bottoms of pools, some stone that I need sometimes, and the rest were empty. If that's the case, then it shouldn't be a problem if we condition it that it can't be used for storage. Like in that I, I don't store that. I mean, I'm not going to say that I don't have bags of cement that I might throw in there, extra bags of cement. I have some coping there. I may have a, a pool cover or a pool liner or a couple pool liners that I might put in there. I mean, is, am, am, I, am I allowed to store, things, to store things? I mean, I don't have people come into the house to buy things. You know what, first of all, I'm uncomfortable with somebody filming us. I'm not sure that that's legal, unless you're oh. talking on the phone. I don't know. I don't know. Are you talking on the phone? Are you talking on the phone or are you filming us? So, this is what I'm proposing. It's not that um, we don't want to approve you. So, in, in your benefit, I think it's best if you tonight sure. say you want to continue this let us go look at it talk to the building inspector talk to some of the other and see exactly where we can advise you better sure. than tonight that, that's fine I mean if you want me to I and I had already told one of my buddies that if she wanted me to tone down the, the size of the garage a very good idea I, I I don't have a problem with that I I was looking for the extra space because if I park a couple few vehicles in there then there's no room to store anything a else. A few can't be business vehicles. All right, so I can't, so if I have the, so if I do have the doors and I park the truck in the garage, I'm still not allowed to do that. It, I mean, so I would have to actually find a place to park my truck rather than in the garage. One commercial. One commercial. I only have one commercial vehicle. You just said, yeah, you said a couple of few. Well, what do you a couple mean? of few vehicles. If I have a couple of few vehicles. Well, my wife has two vehicles. I'm saying if to park them in the... I have, I have one commercial, but it's over 12,000 pounds. It's an Isuzu box truck, the small Isuzu box trucks, that I would like to be able to park in, in my garage. I mean, I'd like to be able to get out and go to work in the morning. I, I'm not looking to try to screw anybody or anything like that. I, I, I just want to be able to go out and go to work and come home. I think we should continue this. I, I, I think you should tell us that you want to continue this to the November, to the October. What month am I in? The October, yeah. Would you like me to redraw, have some plans redrawn up in the meantime? Something, oh, what are we looking at, 20 feet? You want me to keep it at the 20 feet? I mean, I, like I said, if I'm gonna park my truck, and, if I'm, and I'm being honest, I'd like to be able to park the truck. I need 12 foot doors on there. That gives me a height of 16 feet for the bottom, for the bottom which doesn't mean, leave me a lot of pitch on a 30, on a 30 by 30 garage. For, for snow, I mean. Well, then let me uh, let me ask you this here then. Yeah. What what is the height you would? I mean. Well, I put in for twenty eight six. I mean, but I mean, if I could get away with twenty two, twenty three feet, I, I would at least it'd give me a little bit more of a pitch on on my roof, and I wouldn't have to worry about it being so flat. I, I know you, uh, it seems like you have a couple of neighbors here. And, yes, and that, so that are, I, I guess, in opposition, I know. And then maybe we can um, have, just have a little more decision on the height or whatever. 
So, uh, oh, we have, uh, do you want to speak or we have your statements? You, anybody in favor? Anybody in opposition? Do you want to come up and speak? Or do you want to just come up and give your name for the record and I can't tell you what to do. Hi, my name is Donna Lanny. I live at 12 Madison Ave, so I am diagonally across from the property in question. Um, I do oppose it because of the size. I have seen it. I know how huge it would be, and it just doesn't belong in an R1 zone. And I fear for the intended use. Okay. Thank you. This is... Um, my name is Claire Strong. I live at 9 Madison Avenue, and I've lived there for 53 years, and I know very well what this building has done to our neighborhood over the time it's been there. If you, someone want to read that, I just, it's up to you. No, I'm just, uh, so we have, we have a packet here that, Obviously, we received this evening, and we're all going to look through, but I will read the opening statement, and this is from Claire and Richard Strong, 9 Madison Avenue. We have been residents of 9 Madison Avenue for 53 years. We are asking the board not to allow construction of this by Mr. Caponito as per plans he has submitted to you. Mr. Caponito built this structure in 1997 without obtaining a permit and conducted his pool business on the property in an R1 zone. A fire destroyed the building in August 2014. The fire was frightening because of the size of the structure in itself. Pool chemicals, propane tanks, pool equipment, trash, etc., and firemen unable to get to the fire because of how the building was situated on his property. Access was gained through backyard of his neighbor on Harrison Avenue. Neighbors were told it was over, no business, no building, over. The business has continued. We were just made aware that Mr. Caponita was told to cease his pool or any business on February 12, 2015 by the city of Peabody. This did not happen. The proposed detached garage is going to be built on the foundation of the original building built in 1997. It's too big for an R1 zone. If he asked before he put it in, he would have been told that. The size of the structure is too big. Why does he need a second floor? He wants to put his business truck into his garage. Never has done it in the past when the old building was there, except the night of the fire. He was welding the truck inside the building late at night and ignited something. If the board allows this variance, could I suggest the following? The structure may not be used to run a business on the property. The structure may not be used as living quarters the structure be resized, no second floor, smaller foundation maybe. I have attached pertinent papers, pictures, which I would like for you to review. We are opposed to the construction of any structure on the premise of 13 Madison Ave. Thank you for your consideration. Richard and Claire Strong, 9 Madison Ave. C could I answer something? There yep. was that, that was a permitted garage. That wasn't built without a permit. So Carla, if you don't mind, you, you'll research that for us? That's why you're at the podium, because you can refute any of this. So we'll look into that. Uh, excuse me. Back when I built it, the, the zoning was different. They allowed for a detached garage to be five feet off the property line, and it was 34 feet for a height limit when I built it. We can con I don't. We can continue it. I'll. I'll see if I can have somebody redraw up some plans, lowering down the roof line, 
you know, I, I'm not opposed to trying to accommodate right. my, my, and, and, my and, neighbors. And, I mean, I'm... Right. And, you know, let, let me just tell you, the best and the most productive buildings that are uh, constructed with neighbor oppositions are when you are actually able to listen to the neighbors and then work with them. Because we understand where you're coming from. We understand you want to rebuild, but, you know, there's a lot of compelling evidence that, you know, this is really, it's, it's, a, it's a tough situation. So if you can work with them, you know, we'll come and take a look, we'll drive by, everybody will read this. It's a disaster there. I have, there's no place for me to put any tools, anything. And maybe talk to the building inspector again, but really work it so everybody can be happy. That's all I'm asking. I, I'm not in opposition to any of that. I, I, I'm the easiest going person. I'm sorry, Rob. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess I ask, I'm asking to continue. <laughs> Whenever it is in October. In, in the meantime, I'll, I'll, like I said, I'll see if I can get some plans redrawn. I have to keep the existing footprint. I can't break out my foundation or re-put another foundation. Just to put on the record, the petitioner has uh, made a motion to continue, a request to continue, so I'll therefore make a motion to continue. Second. All in favor? Thank you. I will see you next month again. Motion to approve the minutes. Okay. All in favor? Yep. Aye. Aye. 